Okay, so Baba is has been going through a decent collapse in the last year or more. The yeah. the current price is around ninety dollars, which is either 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 below or just comparable to the IPO price. Uh, wow, that was maybe how many years ago? Twenty fourteen. Oh, actually, no. eight years ago. And in mm. the meantime, the company has been growing the revenues for some time, and I think they have been growing yeah, more at, than tenfold. They've been growing at yeah, thirty percent, maybe in the last eight years or forty percent, and forty, yeah, yeah. And uh, and the stock price is basically unchanged. Now, the, I think the difference with all the other <laughs> right. stocks that we have done so far is that you can buy an AD, what is it called, ADR? Yeah. Uh, stock in the uh, New York Stock Exchange, because this is basically a Chinese company. And yeah. I think this is the problem for many investors that even though this could look like maybe a good investment, we'll, we'll look at the analysis. Then there's also the, the variable of the Chinese government that basically anything can happen at any time. So this introduces a further risk that we should think about. Yes. Uh, they yeah, passed, it, probably yeah. this is the this is the elephant in the room. Yeah. For Baba. Yeah. Their past return on total capital has been around 15%, which is a number that we like. Um, they have $22 billion in um, in debt, in total debt, but they have $75 billion in cash. Um, yeah. So they're doing pretty good as a, as a company. They're even less volatile in a way. I'm surprised yeah, yeah, in this than the market. I mean, if you look at the numbers, it's a very healthy company. It's the Chinese Amazon in a way, right? Yes. I mean, they grew a lot. Their yeah. balance sheet is good. They've been growing so... revenues uh, at 40% in the last uh, 5 to 10 years, as we said. Cash flow at 28%. Yeah, yeah, Earnings at twenty eight, book value at twenty eight. Uh, they have it's multiples. Pretty stable, right? So pretty stable, yeah, amazing actually. And the multiples in the last five years have been ten, twenty two, thirty seven, and six for revenues, cash flow, earnings, and book value. And then we had a very important contraction in the last uh, year. And so, for for example, now the PE ratio is only ten for such a company. Uh, the P book value is 1.5. Uh, I mean, these are very low multiples. The price to cash flow is 9. The price to revenue is 1.8. Yes. So the multiples are really, really low. They are really, really low. And so I see... Because, I mean, investors are really, really scared. <laughs> yeah. I mean, of course, this is, a, situa this is a, a classic example where the company has been growing. Like, there's no doubt. There's no debt. I mean, there is debt, but it's basically covered in, in, with the cash. Yeah. Three and, times. <laughs> yes, and the share price is the same price that you had at the IPO. So the share price yeah, should yeah. be maybe now 10 times the, the price that well, you had at okay. the IPO. Or... Well, okay. For the same multiples. Yeah. But then suppose that the multiple comes down. I mean, it, it, it was $320 yeah. a share. Yeah, that, that, that made more sense 2020. in a way. Yes. It could have yes. been overvalued. I, I don't know that because I didn't do the valuation back then. But it made more sense since the company was growing so much that the price was kind of catching up yeah. in a way. Uh, yeah, at the very top, at $320 a share, the price to sales was 8 And, you know, the, 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 there has always been a lot of volatility in this stock. I mean, so in the same year, 2020, the low in 2020 was about half of of the high okay so the the price to sales at that point was probably about half so maybe four yeah or five you know even with a contraction in multiples of let's say a factor of two uh the price should have been four times what, what it is today yeah and i see that so. you are being of course conservative on your assumptions in red yeah, so the multiples extremely are basically the current multiples, which are, as we said, very low. You are doing even a, below. Even below, yeah. And you're doing a 10-year analysis. Mm. And you also the growth, I think it's a decent growth, but maybe I guess that it would be also, I mean, in, in some other occasions or other people could easily assume larger 
um, growth than these numbers for BABA. But basically, is it fair to say that you are being conservative on both growth, but actually mostly on, on multiples? Yes, uh, I mean, I, I think so. But of course, this completely ignores what could happen. So I am really skeptical of, um, of using a higher multiple here. When you say but what could happen, you're talking about the Chinese government? Reaper, or? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Repercussions about, you know, huge fines or uh, new regulations yeah. or just harsh deglobalization, you know, fast deglobalization. I don't know. So in some sense, we have to assume that the world has changed a lot uh, with respect to uh, 2019. And so um, w what I'm trying to do here is to imagine, you know, a, a spectrum of, of possible events, you know, several possible events, and just to wait with some probability what could happen. Uh, th this is like a weighted average, so it will be wrong for sure in some sense. I think but it's if we if, wrong in a way, but yeah, then it, it, yeah. If we repeat this, you know, for for several stocks on average, we should be correct or we mm -hmm. should be fine. But in this case, yes, I'm I'm trying to be conservative, and of course, I am like removing a black swan, you know, event. Some something like okay, something extremely bad happens. Sure. And I see that the CAGR at the current price will be around 8%. The company, of course, is not paying any dividend. And then, as usual, we have the target prices at 90%, 80%, and 70% of the actual price, which would give you 9, 10, and more less, percent yeah. in CAGR. Yeah, more or less. Okay, which means... Yeah, which wouldn't change much. Yeah, of right. course. Yeah. Uh, and what about the DCF model? Yeah, the DCF model is based on uh, 2021 okay. numbers okay so they continued to grow okay so this is quite surprising uh so of course they had um they they had one quarter when they went down you know in in revenues yeah but then they they continued to grow essentially it's just a blip you know the, it, in the world there, there was a mess but on their uh, financials there, there was just a blip um, so in any case yeah the, the the initial free cash flow per share is um, based on 2021 numbers so it's this uh, 12 percent that i read and then you have the uh, final it's nine dollars oh uh, yeah oh, the, oh yeah the, the, the growth, growth is, yes. yeah yeah the growth is yeah the growth is and the final one is uh, is four yeah which which would be extremely I don't know. It would be a bit strange. It would be like saying that they are not growing in 10 years from now at yeah. all. So it's a, it's again a conservative assumption, but we know that there are, there are, there are many things going Very. on there. So. And yeah. even with this uh, conservative assumption and uh, a discount rate of 10%, yeah. you get a fair value of $200. And so a KGAR yes. at the current I price know. of 15%. 15, Basically, yes. half of it coming yes. from the the discount that we have currently, right. and, and the other half right. coming from the growth of this cash flow that you from just growth. talked about. Exactly. And what is their market cap actually now? That's also another thing that uh, it's maybe worth looking at. So, okay, so the current market cap of Baba is two hundred and fifty billion dollars, and assuming this uh, growth, we would be at seven hundred and sixty billion dollars in ten years, which. You know, 10 years, yes. would make sense. For some people, this could be, again, conservative because maybe you you can expect that in 10 years, Baba is like Amazon right now. And so that it might have a $1 trillion or $1.5 trillion market cap, but it's not in the US. Right. And that's kind of the problem. Yes. So unfortunately, it's uh, there's this big fear uh, that is that is pushing down the multiple and uh, and also, uh, I think that it is reflected in the growth rates. You know, what, what we discount is very, is okay, I don't want to say very low because it's in any case double digit or, or 
high single digits so yes. it's not so so bad but but still compared to the past it's it's really non comparable mm -hmm. and of course the world changed but but even with these assumptions the kegar is is pretty reasonable then of course we have to say that on, i mean on average smp the smp uh goes up uh, 10% per yeah. year on average so yeah, of course, if the KGAR is what you get from the DCF, it's better, it's 15%. That would be uh, above the market, but it's it's not a valuation uh, that basically gives results as we got for from Google, for example. But the interesting right. part here is that it's really mostly driven by the fear given the location of the business. Otherwise, I would say this is a company yeah. that we could value with less conservative assumptions because it makes sense for the business itself. And yes. here we would get Kager of maybe 15, 18%, which would be more reasonable yes. for such a business if it was, for example, in the US. Oh, sure, sure, absolutely. Yeah. Um, th this could have been um, a multi, very similar uh, to Amazon. Yeah, like a multi-bagger, right? Like a 10-bagger or maybe even more. Yes. Yeah. Especially so, at the current valuations, the current price. I mean, yes, 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 yes. At, at this point, we we have to accept that, from a purely rational point of view, it may make sense to to consider it. I actually own Baba at this price. Okay, but yeah. very small part of of my portfolio. One <laughs> uh, percent. <laughs> okay, okay. But I'm, I'm happy that it's at but, least at this price and not at the prices that we've seen last year, for example. Yeah, okay. I mean, you can still lose it all if something happens in China, uh, <laughs> but it makes a bit more sense with the valuations. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I believe that the multiple that I'm using here are, the multiples are very low. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. So, I mean, the, it, and also there's the just too rates. much going on, right? I mean, we have been there going is too through much going on. So, COVID, and then we had yeah. Russia and China supporting Russia, and then before but that. Also, do you remember when the Chinese government started to look into Baba and the, the thing with Jack Ma? Sure. Yeah, the Jack Ma disappeared yes. for a few weeks or months, yeah. and, and then they had to pay a fine yeah, in, the, in their balance sheet. There's like minus something to the Chinese yeah, government. I think, I think so. Yes, and then they, uh, yeah. I mean, there the, there's a lot uh, that al already went wrong. Yeah. So, and this is not even so, about the ADR. So buying the stock in the New York no, Stock no, no, Exchange no, yeah. versus buying it at what Hong, Hong Kong, I guess, right? Because mm. if it gets delisted, you would get the shares in the other stock ex exchange. So mm -hmm. I don't really see that as a big yeah. problem. It's mostly about oh, what happens yeah. to the company that basically would yeah. kill both both stocks, right? The, the one in the New York Stock Exchange and, and the one in Hong Kong. It would kill actually the company itself. I don't know what, exactly. what's their so intention he, with Baba, actually. Exactly, exactly. The danger here is on the business. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm really not so scared that they will kick out uh, uh, foreign investors. No. I mean, okay, this could happen, but it's it's really a black swan. This is a black swan. So this would be a black swan. So no, I, I, I don't know. I, I am not discounting that, of course, but we are discounting that something that that in the future, you know, there will be some burden that it was not present in the past and it's not covid related it's not you know the war it's something that is very idiosyncratic to china yeah we'll see that's so, that's a that's a tough one we'll see this yeah. is a tough one for because you want many to own reasons. it for the business and you don't want to own it for the location of the business right uh so the i think that you know any company that was able to grow at those rates, you know, 40, 30. For so many years. For so many years. It's, it's really great. Yeah. Um, so it's not really 
related, you know, a, a fear related to the management or, or are they going to be able, do they know how to grow well? Of course they know. Yeah, so they done it. Uh, is there, is there, you know, is there a market for them in the world? Of course there is. Yeah. So, so this is a tough one for something that, um, that is reflected in the financials, but we don't know really how much uh, should be reflected. So we are assuming this relatively uh, lower growth rates and, and uh, compressed multiples, but it, it's still reassuring that uh, the KGAR is not so bad, right? <laughs> no, we are, we are trying to do whatever it's possible to kill the KGAR and it's still there. I think that, that, exactly that's fair to exactly say. this is the, yeah this is fair to say this is fair to say we are trying to be very 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 conservative yeah and still it's not negative or zero or two no like if you so, okay have this kind of assumptions on on tesla your kager would be minus 10. <laughs> we, we've done yes it. yeah they... you've been the opposite of conservative on tesla to get a kager of zero percent and here you're actually being yeah, very yeah. conservative and you're getting a KGAR of 8 to 15, depending on the model. Exactly, exactly. You are, you are like uh, analyzing my psychology. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I think but this, this also makes sense when you do valuations. I think there, there are two things that you can do, you know, right? There, there's the one valuation where you, you, you try to, to be very analytic and you try to get uh, your assumptions and the analysis Like with Google, right? Right, with Google, yeah, oh, this is really making sense. I have to assume this growth, then I'm still going to reserve for myself a certain margin of safety. And then you ask, okay, what do right. I get? I get a, a KGAR of 15%. Fine. And then there are other businesses where you can also use valuation in the opposite way, where you're like, I don't really trust what's going on here. It can be the business, it can be the stock, right. it can be the government. Right. And then you're like, okay, then let me be extremely conservative because I really don't trust what's going yeah. on here. And let me see if I still get a Kager, which is uh, above a certain value. And this happens with Baba. We'll see. And yeah. And as you said, with Tesla, it was exactly the opposite. Let, let me assume a growth that is 30% very which is what they difficult had, to achieve. Exactly. Right. And, 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 and we had, uh, uh, we 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 made that calculation on the revenue, right? right? And then that you would, they would hope... have a revenue that is yeah, yeah. Then you would hope to get uh, a CAGR of 10, 15 percent, right? Because you're assuming a thirty percent growth, very least. right? And then actually the you get least. zero or two or three or four. Yeah, you get it's like zero. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No thanks. Yeah, thanks, but no thanks. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, so, guys, for is, for Baba. Is, um, yeah, let, let's let's put it in, in the watch list and uh, let's it's in my watch happens. list and I have some of it, uh, but ah, it really yeah, depends yeah, right, on right. what will go on in the next years and uh, we'll see. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Okay, cool. Thank you.